she was one of the first four designers who led to the opening of the global stage or catwalk to African designs in the year 2000 as they participated at the New York Fashion Week. She's also considered as one of the pioneers of African fashion and one of the foremost important designers in Nigeria. I'm talking of no other person than Diola Sego. Yes, you're highly welcome to our series on fashion billionaires, exactly how they started. If you've not watched the other episode, please kindly do because it's going to be of great help to you. I'm Joke Toluani Setro, a serial entrepreneur majoring in fashion, and I'm based in Lagos, Nigeria. Kindly grab a cup of coffee and let's go right into this discourse. Diola Sego is a Nigerian haute couture fashion designer from Undo State, Western Nigeria. She was born on the 21st of August, 1966, and she had her first degree in business administration from the University of Miami, USA. She got a master's in finance from the University of Lagos. Yes, she started designing in the year 1989. Being the daughter of a successful businessman, Mr. Ojoa Day, the founder of Eliza Day Toyota in Nigeria, her father expected her to take over the family business. But her passion was never in that direction. So she opted for a vision and a dream in fashion as a great creative. And her father was so mad with her for this. But you know what? She decided she was going to be who she was destined to be. Her father discouraged her, but 10 years later, when she won a award at New York, her father confessed to the fact that she actually knew what she wanted and she's doing great at it today. Lessons to learn from this. Never allow anything or anyone sway you away from your passion or God's given talent. Not even money. Our father said to her, you want to become a tailor? I would like you to know that when she wanted to start a career in fashion then in 1989, there were no renowned people in fashion like we have it today. People that went to school, went to study abroad, and you're coming back to say you want to become, then they referred to designers as tailors. So a father said, you want to become a tailor, a seamstress? How much are you going to be making? Consider the amount you make selling one car to the amount you make selling a clothes. She told her dad, this is what I have passion for. This is my dream. I'm a creative. And she went for it. And in the end, this has taken her to the global stage. And not just to the global stage, but she has made a global impact for African fashion that she will ever be remembered for. Yes, as she was one of the first four designers who led to the opening of the global stage or catwalk to African designs in the year 2000 as they participated at the New York Fashion Week. She's also considered as one of the pioneers of African fashion and one of the foremost important designers in Nigeria. She showcases contemporary fashion using authentic African fabrics of antiquity. She goes back to her African heritage in terms of fabrics and skills and contemporizes them such a way that ensures their global acceptance and sustainability into the future. And you might want to ask, how did she develop this passion and dream, not having learned fashion? Yes, to her, fashion is a calling in her family. And it all started with her grandmother that was selling this 
and woven fabric of antiquity known as Ashoke. And a mother took over that as an hobby. A mother had a small tailoring house that she called Odua Creations, where she produced meticulously embroidered traditional menswear. And at that time, she was there not knowing that she was already learning from a mother. And her own creative talents were already being developed then. She just discovered that she could drape very well. She would just put a clothes on the mannequin and start draping and different stunning designs would come out. And it was just natural with her. So that was how she knew her calling was into fashion despite the fact that she never learned this from school. She's well known for paying quality attention to details, also for her expert handling of diverse range of fabrics and her exemplary understanding of the Africans' women's bodies. Yes, and she has brought a great innovation to the world of African fashion. And one of such innovation is what is called komole. Komole is an authentic African fabric made from some hand-woven flowered fabrics. And they are woven on the same looms that were used in the 11th century. So after weaving them, they now cut them out to come out in form of lace. So Komale is Diola Sego's work that's created our African lace from our hand-woven fabrics of antiquity. So, and these fabrics have now been taken to the global stage, global catwalk, and highly recognized. And the world is really proud of this innovation she has brought to Africa, thereby improving the world's perception about Africa, that Africa is just a continent of consumers. She wanted to prove this point wrong. She wanted to prove that global fashion designers can actually come out of Africa. To her, she felt that there was so much weakness in African designs and clothing that we are not represented on the global stage or catwalk. And she felt she would be so selfish to keep this away from the world. So she looked away from all the constraints that was around her when she came to Nigeria, not minding the lack of infrastructures and amenities, not minding all the structures that were supposed to be in place for you to have a working system. We are not in place, but she decided that she was going to do it. She had this can-do spirit, and she was so convinced that our products were genuine and they were going to conquer the world. And that is what has actually happened. Our products have conquered the world. She has been known as the queen of African designs, and she has brought so much value to the African culture, African heritage, and African designers that African designers are now being well accepted on the global platform, on the global stage, on the global catwalk. These are parts of the pioneering works done by Diola Sego. Yes. Now you can see that Africa is not just a consuming continent, but we are value adders. And this was actually coupled with the fact that she adds passion to empower the African women in those villages that are weaving and doing all these African clothing, authentic African clothing. So by empowering these African women in these villages, she's ensuring the continuity of her heritage. And as more and more people get to know about this our heritage, they'll be buying from Africa. They'll be wearing a silhouette. And the fact that people are wearing these are designs as silhouettes means that 
They have come to empower us physically and economically. And therefore, Africa will be adding value to the world and will be selling out our own designs, exporting our designs. And by this, we're going to be having a favorable balance of trade. And by this, our standard of living as Africans will drastically improve and we will no longer be termed the third world countries, but like China has really been working on its production capacity, building our manpower, our human resource, our populace. So Africans, we should look inward, go back to our heritage, build on this, build the skill, build the people working on this, and build all that we have in our culture. By the time we do this, the world will come buying from us, and we will not just be termed the normal consumers and the dumping ground of the world. So let's pause and learn a lesson from this. What is that idea that is on your mind? That idea might be the one that will liberate the next generation of Africans, might be the one that will liberate the next generation of those from your continent. So don't keep it to yourself and don't ever allow anyone to kowtow you, to belittle you. She decided she was going to be who she was meant to be notwithstanding the fact that her father did not believe in her at first. Yes, when you are on the journey of success, most persons won't believe in you. Until you are already getting to your destination, until you've arrived at a milestone of success, because you cannot arrive at the greatest of success until you're done on earth. You keep learning, you keep advancing. Once you've achieved a milestone, you still want to go further and achieve another one. So, but before you ever achieve any success in life, no one will believe in you. That was what they did to Jack Ma. They saw him that he was a never do well. Nothing good can come out of you. But he kept on pressing on. And in the end, right now, he's the owner of Alibaba and he's doing great. And so many people want to know him. So just make Make sure you keep on to that passion you have and make sure you make the world a better place to, through it. So whatever idea or skill you have in fashion or in any other industry, make sure you utilize it to the betterment of all. Yes, Diola Sego is the founder of the House of Diola, which comprises of the Diola Sego, that's the IN luxury or bespoke uh, line of the business and we also have the clown that's the high streets line of the business she has won different awards like mnet anglo gold african designs award and she was also nominated as one of the first four designers from africa to showcase their work at the new york fashion week in 2000 yes and she was the first Nigerian who had her own standalone at the New York Fashion Week in September 2014. Our clientele ranges from Africans, first ladies to societal ladies, even Will Smith is part of our clientele. To her, ethnic fashion is what the world needs now. And people are actually looking for a difference. They want to be able to feel that they are part of the story of what they are wearing. And this is actually a call to African designers. So she said African designers should wake up and go back to our culture, our heritage. We should keep evolving it into something that the whole world will keep coming back for. And when the world is coming back for our heritage, our culture, our designs, what that means is that, yes, before you know it, we will be leading the world. And are you an African designer today? Do your designs have anything of our culture, of our heritage in it?
And when we're talking about our culture, I hope by now, if you're following this channel, you know we are not talking about African prints because African prints, it's a total deception. It's never part of African culture. So we're talking about and woven fabrics of antiquity and woven fabrics and we're talking about tie and dye. What Diola Sego does is that she goes into the various villages to source for these fabrics that are authentic African fabrics that are hand woven and they are done, those uh, that are hand woven, the hand woven ones are the Ashoke, the top drawer clothes, the clothes that were majorly for the kings, for the royals then. But right now, they've been made into contemporary use that you can actually wear them and you still feel okay with them. And we have the tie and dye. We have various uh, African fabric from various parts of Africa. She goes to different parts of Africa to source for these authentic fabrics and empowering those doing them such that these various authentic African fabrics won't go into extinction. We have numerous African countries that are producing and specializing in these various authentic fabrics. For instance, the Ashoke is majorly hand woven by the Yoruba people or tribe from Nigeria, while the Adire or the tie and dye technique is or batik techniques, it's done or produced by the Yoruba people as well in Nigeria. We have Akwete, that's the hand woven fabric also produced by the Igbo people of Nigeria. Then we have Kitengi that is produced in Zambia, yes. And we have the Kente that is produced in Ghana. We have the Kanga from Tanzania and so many other words. So as African designers, we are to look inward, go back to these our various heritage, keep evolving them into something that will meet up with the contemporary fashion and we make sure that they are well sustainable into the future. By so doing, we'll be saving our continents and our unborn generation a lot. So others from various continents should look into what is their heritage and build on that. Diola Sego's advice to young designers was such that they should actually go for their passion. But in the process of going for your passion, clothing nations know that you have to turn that passion into a business and you have to really make something good out of it. Not just that you're trying to survive, but so manage that passion as a business that it will take you to the top of the world, yes, and you will be able to earn more. So as a creative, as a great designer, you should be in business to create wonderful pieces and yet make profit out of it so that such an endeavor will be well sustainable into the future. So what are you doing today? Where did you start from? Where are you right now in the industry? What is your passion? Have you been able to turn that passion into a money-making machine and not just with the mind of, I want to make money? You start by creating top-notch designs that can stand anywhere in the world and yet making sure that you give your client, your customer, the best of customer service experience and putting all together, you're definitely going to succeed. While hats of the legacy she would like to leave behind. This was what she said. She would like to be known for one who went back to her heritage, to her African heritage or history, and made us to be recognized once again that we Africans are indeed people who had value. And this is great. So what would you like to be remembered for? What legacy would you like to leave behind? What are you even doing now? Is it going to outlive you? Is it going to outstand you? If not, why not start 
a great thing today with that unique thing in you. The unique thing in her was that she had the ability to drape, to style. She would just, she, she's a creative. She can just the day and she will imagine a style. She'll go on the mannequin, she'll drape it and coming out in a beautiful way. Then she started. So whatever is that skill in you, please build it to the highest and you will definitely get to the top of this industry. As usual, I would like to hear from you. So let me hear from you in the comment section. Where are you? Are you planning to get to the top? And till I come your way next time, I remain Jackie, Tulu, and etc. Catch you. Love you. Bye-bye.